Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, one of the leading figures in the campaign to take Britain out of the EU could be ordered to give evidence to a Commons inquiry into fake news, although it's not clear whether he can be ordered to do anything. Damien Collins, chair of the Digital Culture, Media and Sport Committee, has asked the Speaker for an early debate and vote to try to force Dominic Cummings to attend. He's refused several of the requests to appear. The committee released correspondence between Mr Collins and Mr Cummings over the committee's efforts to question him about Vote Leave's use of the online firm Aggregate IQ as part of their investigation into allegations that Facebook users' private data may have been misused. On the 11th of May, Damien Collins told Mr Cummings, given that in your emails you have accused the committee both of grandstanding and helping to spread fake news, I'm not sure that we have seen much friendly cooperation before demanding he appear. Mr Cummings emailed back, no chance, I will not participate in your theatre. And then a few days later, you talk of contempt of Parliament. You seem unaware that most of the country feels contempt for Parliament and this contempt is growing. I will not participate in your theatre, he went on. Well, our political correspondent, Michael Crick, is in Westminster. Michael. Well, this is quite an extraordinary dispute between two Conservatives, Damien Collins, the chairman of the Culture Committee, and Dominic Cummings, who till not long ago was uh, a long-standing advisor to Michael Gove. Now, if the Speaker in the next few days, as looks likely, grants a debate and a vote on this, it will be the first time in 98 years that has happened. But even if MPs as a whole vote to order Dominic Cummings, I suspect Mr Cummings will simply ignore that, judging by the things he's been saying to Damien Collins, some of which you read out. Uh, in his blog recently, um, Dominic Cummings said to Damien Collins, I'm calling your bluff. Your threats are as empty as those from May Hammond, David Davis to the European Union. Say what you like, I will not come to your committee, regardless of how many letters you send or whether you send characters in fancy dress to hand me papers. Uh, I suppose if, uh, if he does ignore that, then the Committee of Privileges might be able to admonish uh, Mr Cummings. I'm not sure that would bother him that much. It's a bit of a myth that Parliament has the power to go out and arrest witnesses uh, and uh, so on. I think this whole episode shows how little powers they do have. As for Mr Cummings, well, he did say in April that he would be willing to come and talk to the committee in the first half of July. They said that was too uh, late. Uh, and indeed, he even suggested he'd be willing to address another committee, providing they weren't, in his opinion, grandstanding. In the meantime, tomorrow, the Culture Committee has before them Alexander Nix, the chief executive, former chief executive of Cambridge Analytica. Michael Crick. Alexander Nix said he was tricked into boasting to an undercover reporter working for this programme that his political strategy firm used honey traps and bribery to smear political opponents. The former Cambridge Analytica boss said he had lied to impress our reporter who was posing as a potential client. He blamed the global liberal media for attacking his company, which has since closed down because he had worked for Donald Trump's election campaign. Our Home Affairs correspondent Andy Davies is in Westminster. Andy? Well, it may not have been the high-octane showdown we witnessed when the US Congress grilled Mark Zuckerberg, but for any keen observer of this story, it was still absolutely riveting. Alexander Nix was celebrated as Donald Trump's digital guru. He was the face of what became the most famous political data firm in the world and yet was at the heart of its notorious demise. When he came before MPs last time, he was riding the crest of a wave of global curiosity, but this time he's swimming in the debris of a professional catastrophe. Under pressure, undoubtedly. Contrite at times, but ever defiant. The hearing's just finished. This is what happened. He's been down this road before. The trip to Westminster. How are you feeling about today, Mr Nix? Notes in hand to face an expectant group of MPs. Any response to the Financial Times allegations? It's just that this time, they know far more about Alexander Nix than they did before. Who doesn't? 
committee is very grateful uh, to Alexander Nix. This was a formal summons with one formality. Mr Nix wanted to challenge from the very start. He wanted to make an opening statement. Mr Nix, what I'd rather do is that if we could take the questions in the order the committee has them. Ordinarily, uh, I, I would respect that, but these aren't ordinary circumstances. Mr Collins, you'll have plenty of opportunity, as will all the committee, to ask me as many questions as you want, but I have to insist on delivering the rest of this I'm, I'm sorry, Mr Nix, it's not your place to insist uh, on anything in front of this committee. He was the online marketing rock star, caught offside in spectacular fashion. We were able to use data to identify... The British data geek who supposedly helped swing an American election, but whose involvement in the harvesting of millions of Facebook profiles came back to haunt him. Data. Everyone got data. And whose dirty trick tactics this program went undercover to expose. Send some girls around to Kennedy's house. Is it time for you to abandon your political work? As the scandal made global headlines and then his once fated company collapsed, the pace of his efforts to shun the limelight only seemed to quicken. Mr Nix, can I ask you what your message is to Cambridge Analytica employees today? Until today. As early on, he had to confront the latest allegation about his conduct, a claim today that he'd taken $8 million out of Cambridge Analytica before it folded. I saw that newspaper article today. Um, what I can say is that the allegation made in that article is false. As was much of the media narrative surrounding him and Cambridge Analytica, he claimed. Think toothpaste, not Trump, was the line. We are a very small advertising agency that happens to work across a number of sectors, one of which is political campaigns. Most of our time is spent selling toothpaste and automotives and, and, and things like that. I mean, it sounds dreadful thing to say, but these are things that don't necessarily need to be true. But it was this and other footage of Nick's filmed undercover by Channel 4 News, which the committee wanted him to explain. Caught boasting to a man he thought a prospective political client of honey traps and handouts to undermine opponents. They are very beautiful Ukrainian girls. They are very beautiful. Yes. I find that works very well. Do you feel embarrassed about it? Well, clearly. Um, that was... Um, that was, uh, you know, for me to get carried away and try and impress uh, someone who I thought was uh, a bona fide um, client to then get um, entrapped into talking about the sort of things that we did um, was not only deeply embarrassing but it's something I regret enormously because of the damage it caused to the company and ultimately to my staff. And yet this had only ever been overzealous salesmanship on his part, he claimed. Hyperbole, saying that Channel 4 News had deliberately omitted the following key caveat he'd said at the time. Please don't pay too much attention to what I'm saying. I'm just giving you examples of what can be done. And of course this was edited out of the video. No, it wasn't. It was part of the broadcast. Please don't pay too much attention to what I'm saying, because mm. I'm just giving you examples of what can, happen. What can be done and what, what has been done. Yes. According to you, everything that has been written or said about Cambridge Analytica is wrong. Yet the only thing we've ever heard directly from you turns out, by your own admission, to be a pack of lies. So you, you can understand the frustration that you deny everything that's ever been written or said about you, and then when you do are caught, when you are caught going on the record saying something, your first reaction is, that's all lies. So you, you can understand you know, that it's a, a frustrating position for us to be in, to have to listen and to try and... Not half as frustrating a position but, but, as it is for me, but, sir. You have attempted to paint yourself as the victim here. Now, by no stretch of the imagination can you be seen as a victim. Surely you can see that. You are not the victim here. And what happens if I was the victim, Mr no, O'Hara? Do you believe you are let's the victim? Just, let's, just, let's just run with this hypothesis for a moment. What happens if I was the victim? 
What happens if, if, as we've seen, we were accused of working Brexit? We didn't work in Brexit. Uh, we were accused of disseminating videos in Ken uh, Kenya. We didn't disseminate videos in Kenya. He went on, what if this was all about the global liberal media taking umbrage at his political work and targeting his company as a result? So you are the victim in all of this. Well, if you're sitting where I am right now, you, you probably feel uh, 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 quite victimised. And so the man who made his name in crafting political messages for others tried hard to deploy one for himself, that of the unfairly maligned toothpaste salesman data guru. Some might think it could be his hardest sell yet. So, Andy, what does Nix do now? Well, we don't know. Does he go on an, a, a Zuckerberg apology tour? Or does he, he's certainly saying sorry to his staff in today's hearing. Does he stick with data analytics when his name is so tainted by this scandal? Or does he return to the world of finance where he worked originally? We, we don't know. So, I mean, what about this story generally? What, what happens next? Well, the New York Times has reported that the FBI and US Justice Department are investigating Cambridge Analytica. That's one to watch. Closer to home, it's all about the Information Commissioner's Office investigation. They went into Cambridge Analytica, but it's so much wider than that. It's the largest data investigation um, undertaken by a data protection agency, we're told, spanning 30 organisations going back a year, looking at the use of personal data in political campaigning helped by Chris Wiley, the original whistleblower in this case. And the impact of that, says the Commissioner, will be to change the behaviour of all the actors in the political campaigning space. So it could be fascinating. I'm joined now from the central lobby in the House of Commons by the Conservative MP Damien Collins, the chair of the Culture Committee, who questioned Alexander Nix today. Well, now, he, he's admitted, uh, Mr Collins, that he, he, everything he told Channel 4 News was a lie. Um, so what he told you is the truth? Well, this is it, isn't it? I mean, he's, he's admitted that he told, well, he says he told lies, but the concern is wider, looking at the culture and practices of that company. A lot of that is under investigation by the Information Commissioner here, law enforcement agencies in other, other countries, and time will tell whether he can continue to stand by the evidence he gave the committee this afternoon. Uh, there are many people who dispute what he said, and we also wanted to follow up on what we thought were inconsistencies with the evidence he gave to us in February, particularly about the, uh, the scale of the use of Facebook data at uh, Cambridge Analytica and what it was used for, uh, and their relationships with other companies like Aggregate IQ, who also worked on the Vote Leave uh, referendum campaign. Aren't you now involved as a committee in territory that really now ought to be in the hands of the police? I mean, if, if the United States has now turned to the FBI, isn't it time you turn to the police? Well, we, um, you know, we, we have given evidence that we've received to the Information Commissioner, so she has that too. Um, the Information Commissioner is the law enforcement authority in terms of data protection in this country, so they will be the ones that make the final recommendations on that. But given that uh, so much has happened since Alexander Nix gave evidence to us in February, we now know so much more about the way in which that company works, the way they acquired and used data, the way they target voters in election campaigns, and know more about that other international work as well. I think it was right that we have the chance to question him again today about that, which we've now done. Uh, but the final decision will be taken in terms of the law by the Information Commissioner, and we'll produce our own report in due course. But in a sense, the pressure is still on you now, because the missing link in all this is the question of whether in fact there was some kind of involvement in the Brexit referendum. And the question here result really revolves around the man who was most closely involved in the Vote Leave campaign, Dominic Cummings, and he's told you he's not coming to see you. So you won't be able to question him and perhaps nothing can be done. Well, this is not just a matter for me. It's uh, tomorrow uh, the Speaker has given me leave to introduce a motion to the House of Commons. So the whole House of Commons will be asked to support a summons for Dominic Cummings to appear. I think it's quite a serious matter for an individual to ignore, not just a summons from a parliamentary committee, but a summons from the whole House of Commons. So we will have that debate and discussion tomorrow. But also the Information Commissioner and the Electoral Commission is investigating these issues as well. We've received a lot of data and information. What we wanted to do was give Dominic Cummings the chance to respond to allegations about 
vote leave that we've received. I think that's the proper thing for us to do. I think uh, it's surprising that someone who, is, who campaigned so hard to, uh, to try and bring new powers back to Parliament seems to hold the but institution in such general contempt. Forgive me, I mean, wouldn't that involve actually bringing him to the bar of the House uh, as something which is effectively almost without precedent and then having the House question him? Surely that really is a matter now for the police. When the, if he came before Parliament as, in response to the summons, uh, he will be questioned by uh, the select committee. That's what the, uh, the summons requests. If he refused that, it's a matter for the standards committee to determine what further action should be taken. But as you quite rightly say, uh, he can be questioned by other authorities who are also investigating this matter. The reason we've called him to give evidence is we've received evidence about him and about Vote Leave and the way they organise their campaign, the way they use data. Uh, we've questioned other organisations like Aggregate IQ, the company they employ to do their data targeting and analysis work. Right. So we, we wanted him to respond to that and uh, we feel that as a parliamentary committee we have the right to ask him to do so. Damien Collins, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Christian. Well, with me now in the studio is the Cambridge Analytical, Analytical whistleblower, uh, Christopher Wiley. Well, Alexander Nix made out that it was you who was the liar today. I mean, time and time again he said you had misled MPs, you'd told them things that just weren't true. Um, what's your response? Well, uh, as the chair, Damien Collins, has said uh, at committee today, I actually backed up everything that I said with documents. Uh, and it's not just me. Uh, it is several other people who have come forward to the committee and to, and to uh, journalists at The Guardian and at Channel 4 uh, who have also corroborated uh, the claims that I have made. Um, so I, I'm quite comfortable standing by the statements that I made uh, both to the committee and to the, and to the media. And, and more broadly, you know, this is, this is a man who has been completely discredited uh, because, as he admits, he seems to be a compulsive liar. And his only defense right now is that he was consistently lying to clients left, right and centre. On, on points of fact, though, you know, yeah. he, he says you, you effectively told the committee that Cambridge Analytica had a pivotal role in the Brexit campaign, they didn't vote for vote leave, they didn't work for vote leave, and what, they didn't vote for what, leave .eu. What I, do you, do you what still I, think that? What I said was that the company, uh, Cambridge Analytica, did play a pivotal role in Brexit because of its creation of aggregate IQ, which received 40% of vote leave spending. That was the company in Canada? The company in Canada that was listed as SCL Canada and worked uh, on building the Ripon platform, which is the platform that used all the misappropriated Facebook data. So what I was saying is that they did, yes, play a pivotal role in Brexit because of the companies and the technologies that it created, which were then used by Vote Leave. He said you were also wrong in the allegations you made about what they did in Africa. Do you still stand by it? There's by videos, that? there's documents, uh, there's, other, uh, there's other people who were there, who were witnesses, who've backed up the, the things that I've said. Um, you know, the, again, this is me providing documentation. This is me providing videos. This is me providing emails. You don't have to take my word for it. It is, it is documented in evidence. I mean, ultimately, he was, he was making you out as an embittered man. You know, that he said you had more data than anybody else, that you had then tried to sell uh, the, these services to the same clients, and when you couldn't, you turned on Cambridge Analytica. I mean, that's the way he tried to to paint you out today. Yeah, and it's just flatly untrue. Um, but again, this is a man whose only defense is that he's a compulsive liar. So I don't think he's a credible, I don't think he's a credible witness and I don't think we should take him seriously. I mean, look, a lot of our viewers might be wondering why we're all still going on about this. Right. I mean, why does it matter? Well, it matters because of a wider issue that is, it's exposed, which is how social media uh, is now playing a role in impacting our democracy. And that's really important uh, for, for, for parliaments around the world to debate and understand and really to look more broadly at technology companies like Facebook and how they've been extremely reckless with, with very sensitive personal data and the impacts that that can have. But what, what do you feel seen, is still going on? What, the, well, what we've, what we've seen is the total lack of transparency of Facebook. They refuse to come to, you know, Mark Zuckerberg refuses continuously to come to the British Parliament and testify because he knows that he's going to get asked tough, tough questions that he doesn't want to answer. Like, was, did, did, did uh, misappropriated, misappropriated data, which was used on, on, on Facebook, a affect the results uh, of the Trump election? And again, what was Vote Leave doing during Brexit? Uh, because 40% of their spending went to AIQ, a company that was set up at Cambridge Analytica, and most of that money ended up going onto Facebook uh, targeting. So it, it, it matters for the future of our democracy and it also matters when we think about the fact that 
as technology further integrates in our lives, more and more data about us is being produced. And if we, if we allow companies in a totally unregulated and unchecked way to manipulate that information and indeed what we see around us, that is, that is a loss of agency for people and that matters. Because that affects, that affects how we live, that affects who we know, what we interact with, our job opportunities, and indeed the, 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 the outcome of our elections. And, and, and do you think this is still going on by somebody else? You know, if Cambridge Analytica, Analytica is shut down, you know, what, what do we need to fear? We, we, we need, we, I think the, the, the response of Facebook is really telling. The fact that they don't want to give answers about what's happening on their platform, I think is quite revealing. Why isn't it that, why, why does Mark Zuckerberg not want to come to, to committee? Why doesn't he want to come and testify? Because there is something happening in these companies that they don't want us to see. And I think it's the fact that this is a much more pervasive problem than, than, than what Facebook or other companies would be comfortable with us seeing. We, we should also make clear that AIQ say that they are not Cambridge Analytica. Um, well, sure, but they built Cambridge Analytica's technology, as as Gizmodo and uh, uh, UpGuard have revealed. The data was integrated. And Nick's admitted that, that they did work for them. Yeah, um, they, but they were tied at the hip. You've also said that you are talking to police on both sides of the Atlantic. Yes. What can you tell us about what they're asking you about? Um, so uh, I, I've been dealing with the National Crime Agency in Britain and the FBI um, in the United States. Um, I can't speak specifically as to what they are what they are asking about, but what I can say more generally is that they are they are exploring various potential crimes that have been committed uh, by Cambridge Analytica and actors within Cambridge Analytica on both sides of the on world. both sides of the Atlantic. Yeah. I mean, how has this been for you? I mean, you know, six months ago, you were well known in a very small circle of people. Mm. Now, your face and your claims have been splashed all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, you have been attacked, your credibility has been attacked. Yeah. Um, and you're, you've been at the, the heart of the storm. Yeah. What kind of effect has that had on you? Um, it's, you know, it, it's not about me, it's about what I'm saying that's important. And um, the thing that I find really heartening is the fact that I've now uh, been invited to four jurisdictions to testify at legislatures in, in, in four jurisdictions and that um, our legislators are starting to realize that actually technology is not a niche issue. Technology affects everybody and that we need to take it seriously um, because uh, as society evolves with technology, this is only going to, to grow and into further integrate with our lives. So I'm actually quite heartened by the fact that this story has made an impact. Um, you know, that's in large part due to, you know, Channel 4's work as well as The Guardian and The New York Times um, to, to finally show people what the impact of technology can be on our democracy. And so I, th I, I think that the reaction um, is, is promising and I'm optimistic about it. Chris Wiley, thank you very much. Cheers. Sure.